There we go. Right, John Wedger here, and this is... Uh, Darren. And Darren, you see, <laughs> my man Darren, as advertised, this is um, a special with a, uh, a brew with a view. We're coming uh, live out of Brixton. Hello, Christine. Christine, we're going to let the... Um, Shauna, Shauna's watching from Canada. Um, hello, Sue. So, God, thank you so much for all your help. So, Jay Sanford, Jay is our man. Jay's a, a good guy. He's on board. Hiya, Jay. He's, um, he's, he's going to be part of our little team, Darren. I'm just yep. going to let the viewing figures go up to, to um, over 100 miles. Brian, um, I, I'd like you to meet Brian one day, Darren. You yeah, will like mate, Brian. I'm, he's, I'm happy to. He's, um, he's a real staunch guy and a true campaigner against... Brilliant. against the bad yeah yeah that's you know. what you need mate on board you know Cri you? Christine this is Darren I, uh, Christine again you'll be in touch with Christine Alan yep. Alan Alan I oh, just want Alan Merritt is the beach home survivors the beach beach home is a big children's home not yeah. too far from where we are now yeah yeah I've heard about got, it mate they've got their own survivor group so Alan is um, he's the one who will be organising the protest yeah um, that hopefully we'll be doing um, you know yeah yeah soon. yeah so um Right, well, we're, I'm gonna I'm gonna let it go up to um, in, maybe just before um, Evelina. Uh, Evelina spoke to earlier. Um, just gonna let it go up a little bit, and then we're going live. Uh, Darren's travelled all the way um, from Bristol yeah. with, with with a story that um, it, it's it's really is um, will ring a chord to so many people, and it's a reason why I do what I do. Now, it's taken a lot for Darren to be here today. Darren, um, he's lost nine pound in weight, so that you can give some dietary advice to people in lockdown. I, I yeah. don't think you want to. You no, want to recommend no, it, this? I wouldn't you? recommend the diet I've been on. It's yeah. just not eating and uh, sleeping. It's just been nerves. But the, the days have come quick, you know. To now, and um, you know what I'm doing with John today. I've never done in my entire life. Michael Tarraga. I am Michael. Right. So let let let's let's commence now. So yeah. Um, a video went out um, by Sean Atwood it's called In The Shadows UK which is looking at going viral within a couple of days it's gone up to the 200,000 hits this is really going to go places and it goes on about the institutional cover-ups and in there uh, there was myself there was Anna from Brees Media who who sort of basically taught uh, all of us to do what we're doing my good friend Kieran you, you'll like Kieran he's a lovely Thank guy you, um, uh, Mike's story has, has really um, hit home to so many people, the reality of this. I've, I've interviewed Chris Lambriano, again a career criminal that gained yeah. notoriety I know of Chris. his life. Nice guy. Darren knows Chris. He's a nice chap. Chris does a lot of work now with victims and survivors and I've seen the good work uh, that Chris has done. Now Darren's story dovetails in with, with, with like Michael's story, with Chris's story and so many other people that have bravely come forward. Okay, so you all know who I am. Darren, here you are my man. Thank you John and yeah. you know I just want to say thank you to John Ple uh, Wedger and to Amanda and James for today. You know, thank you very much. It's been brilliant and um, yeah, this is the first time I've, I've ever done this. I've had this pain built up for 38 years now and um, just trying to think you never get a chance to speak because no one wants to listen and for what you've got to say you think that people aren't going to believe you but you know I've, I'm not going to stand in front of a camera and just make things up you can't do that well, well, well Darren, Darren got in touch with me a little over a week ago <sighs> and he gave me a little what we call a pricey of his life and it it really really hit me um, and then Darren has never spoken out Darren spent quite a long time in prison. He has made it clear that he's not here to promote criminality. No way. But I think it will be poignant if we talk about yeah, your, yeah, your life. You, mate. You so, know. so let's go back to young Darren. Yeah. You started your life in, in, in the rough end of Bristol. Yeah, so basically, um, as I say, with my life story today, I ain't cutting the corners and I'll just tell the truth. How did it begin for so, you? So I, I was born on um, December the 27th. 1969 uh, I think it was a Saturday about 6 30 in the morning premature pound old uh, pound in weight sorry um, mum was really really young uh, so I think she just turned well it's either 13 or 14 when she had me hence being so small 
and um, being a prem, you kind of you go out, don't you? You're in an incubator, so I lost that contact with my mum because they say that a baby and mum bond, but in the first three yeah. weeks. So straight away, I was on my own from that mix. You're in an uh, incubator. Have you come from a big family, like sibling-wise? Um, I'm the oldest of um, four boys and one girl. Are you all, and, all from same mum and father, or? Yeah, we got uh, there's mum and dad. You know, me, mum and dad, four boys, and me dad got a daughter with me mum's cousin. So, but you know, it's it's all good. They're all like happy with it, and so anyway, I was born. You know, come out, uh, stayed in prem for a couple of months, then um, went back, come out of hospital. <coughs> I went to my um, grandparents and um, stayed there for a long time as a kid. Uh, life was brilliant. Life was lush with nan and gramps. Was there, was there issues at home that you couldn't go with mum yeah, and dad? Yeah, because of mum being so young and dad, well, being dad, you know, violent towards my mum all the time. And um, so I was kind of, I was between the two ages. I was between mum and dad for a long, long time. And um, when I was with Dan and Gramps, everything was beautiful. You were loved, you were cared for, you were fed well. Then when I was with Big Mum and Dad, um, I, you know, it was hard. Cause I'm not being horrible, you know. And my dad was like a heavy drinker, and I had to witness him beating Mum. Then the beats turned to me and my two brothers, but never the youngest brother. And um, you know, life life was horrible as a kid growing up. Life was horrible. Were the police involved with your family back then? Domestic violence or they social involved, services? They got would never press charges. Right. Because she was too scared. Because yep. dad basically dominated her. He was a vile man. He's still alive and they're still together. You know? And um, it, it was it was hard. Because you're like six years old and you're waking up. Your mum got a black eye and... You know, I've seen my dad do some evil things to my mum as a kid growing up, and it just played on my mind, and it ruined me. It ruined our childhood. There was no love and there was no affection, but that was life in our house, I'm afraid. That's how it was. Did that make you more protective of your mum? Yeah, cause I was scared of, you know, for her. Didn't want her to die. Didn't want nothing to happen to her, you know. Um, it's my mum, innit? I love her. So, you know? so, so growing up, you, you, you've got to harbour all of this inside as well. Yeah. You're going to school, and that how was, was that going? You know, going to school, it was really, really, really hard because you, you're going to school, you're a scared kid, you're a quiet kid, you know, well, not the biggest of blokes, so you're going to get a little bit of a bullying. And um, when you go home, you've got no one to talk to ever, you've got no one to turn to, you can't turn around to mum and dad and say, look, listen, you know, I've been bullied at school, can you come and have a talk with so-and-so and sort it out? And they just weren't interested. By the time the bullying started and school was getting shit, sorry, um, school was getting bad, um, mum had had love and affection beat out of her. She couldn't show it. She couldn't tell us that she loved us as kids or show affection because dad had just beat it out of her. You know, so it was hard for mum. She was like cold and she just couldn't show it. And, you know, so there was just that to keep everything built up inside. School, I, then I, got, I went up to in 1981 to so a, you're moving to secondary yeah, school now right to a senior school and you know that's when a lot of things changed for me for the worse I'm afraid and and you you mentioned something to me when we spoke earlier about an incident that started to occur at school yeah. right can you just describe how you looked at this age you're talking about 12 years old now green eyes blonde hair little lad you know what I mean? I suppose you could say it's every paedophile's dream, couldn't you? Right. You know, but they also know that you've got pain in your eyes. So, so you mentioned about paedophile, so there's something occurred then. Yeah. Are we all right to go ahead with that yeah, and yeah, talk yeah, about that? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so can, can we sort of talk about what so, went on there, if, if you're okay with that, Darren? You know, when I went to secondary school in Bristol, kind of like... I'd, playing up in class and being a bit disruptive and just being an idiot really just being just, just a kid tormented by events at home and stuff yep. and you get put into a place called uh, rescue unit 
and one of my passions was drawing and I, I love drawing because you can escape the pain and anger and everything you're going to but you can put it into a picture do you know that's interesting you say that lady christine that we'll get in touch with she's an art therapist and we're doing a right. lot of work with the art therapy so so you, you've taken a liking to art you've got yeah. a flair for art that's your channel out and, and um, then we had a, te uh, a teacher in our school called um, Chris Flavin. And he'd always like, like what I'd done, come over to my... Because when you're in the rescue unit for naughty kids, there's only like two, three boys at a time. So the, it went a big class. And he'd come across and sort of like, you know, oh, I like what you've done. That was really, really good. And he'd ask you certain things about, you know, why are you quiet? Or why do you play up? Or why do you do things? And I... I'd explain it because when you go home, you've got nowhere to turn to. You've got no one to run to. Or well, I bet you welcome the opportunity to talk as well. And didn't it felt you? nice that someone yeah. would want to listen. But, you know, I was wrong because after a couple of days in special unit with him, you know, he kind of like just got a bit too close at times. He would come up to you and like hug you a little bit or pull you in. And there was a, an occasion that two of the other lads had finished their what they had to do in school to go back into normal class and it was me and Mr Flavin and um, then you know you kind of like it started with the hand um, going down to the back uh, of my back to my back to kind of like put, he pushing his hand down and press himself to me and I didn't know what was going on mate yeah. I didn't know what was going on I just thought you know what are you doing you know and in, in all the time you've been asking me things about life at home and mum and dad mum and dad mum and dad mum and dad and me 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 you know trying to secure my confidence I suppose and um, then you know we were there one day and he just well pushed me over the table and to get I was, well, I was on the table but as he come forward to the table and you know Mr Flavin just kind of pulled me into him and you know obviously you know I had intentions I didn't right. know what was going on I think everyone knows where and this is going there and there. You the know time, I think. yeah yeah no it's alright mate and um, you know it was like and it, it's basically he, he undressed me in a classroom that's what he done he undressed me in a classroom the place where we were was kind of like it wasn't a massive classroom but he knew it was safe and just, never, he just put his hand over my mouth pulled me into him and just raped me as a oh. kid you know what I mean and um, it was horrible because I felt I, I didn't know I, I was 12 I didn't know what was going on I didn't know what was going on it was horrible I didn't know what was going on and I and he knew that I was trapped, that I couldn't go home and tell mum and dad of what was happening. Of course, they of course they he wouldn't did. listen. Of course he did. That's why he you put know? himself in that position, that Darren, you know. And he would, like, always, like, hold me and stuff and, you know, call me his friend. And I wasn't his friend. I thought he was my teacher and I thought he was helping me do drawing. And, you know, I thought, for me, it was someone to talk to and express how I was feeling that day and, you know, what I'd like out of life and where I'd like to be. And um, it just never happened that way. So after a couple of occasions, I just got really, really confused. That's why me, why me? You know, he was always telling me that, you know, if I was to tell that, then one would believe us. Right, because yeah. Of his, yeah, you know, usual predatory behaviour. Because of him yeah. being the teacher and yeah. me being the naughty kid. No one listens and likes the naughty kid. Yeah. And after that, I stopped going to school. I was, I was thrown in from school, I wasn't going to school. So what would you do instead of going to school? I would go to a, a place called um, Henley, uh, Enley's Lake in Bristol and just go for, you know, with a couple of mates and we'd go down there swimming, fishing and just doing lad stuff, playing yeah. in the woods, you know. Stuff and, kids should be doing yeah, anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then you go home at night and there'll be a letter from the school to say you've not been for two, three weeks. What's going on? And my mate, I didn't even give a shit, you know what right. I mean? even care and um, then we got me and mum got taken to a place called Avon House North and what is Avon House North it's kind of like the next step to court right it's when you go in the front of 
three like judges but they're on a table and what they do they ask you as to why you're not going to school and I was just too scared to tell them and um, when I actually said look there is a reason and they just shut me down right so you was actually going to disclose well, I was going to disclose about Mr Flavin as to why I was scared and why it hurt and why I couldn't sit down and why I did go why? when I did go to school why I play up in a classroom because my backside was hurting I couldn't concentrate I was a kid mate how did they shut you down what was because they threatened to put me in care that day if I was to talk any longer right so the, the, do you think they knew a disclosure was coming out yeah right okay they knew a dis- and, they knew something was wrong yeah because I was a little kid and they were asking me why and I said because I went happy at school but what doesn't make you happy I said because the teacher doesn't make me happy why didn't the teacher I said because of what happened and they stopped it um, me and mum had to go out of the office, then we had to come in, and they said that if, you know, I mention a teacher again, or if I bunk off again, that I'll get put away. So, I go back to school, and it all started again. But this time, it was like a lot brutal, it was more like, I don't know, it was as if he hated me. Well, he was near to being rumbled, You know he? what I mean? It was like... It, the aggression that I got from, you know, I felt it was, it was horrible. You know what I mean? It was, none of it was normal, mate. You know what I mean, John? You don't do that to kids. Well, why would anyone, anyone do that, you know? Mm. And, well, let's, we'll just recap on this. We've got Darren here that, you know, was born, was put with his grandparents because it was a safe place to go because there was violence with, with mum and dad. Uh, Darren witnesses a lot of domestic violence. Um, for childhood is rough. He ends up in, in this little unit within his school for kids that have been a little bit disruptive. He takes a liking to art. He thinks this is going to be his channel out. And it turns out the art teacher is a paedophile. The grooming process starts and Darren is then raped. And then the rapes become brutal. Darren absconds from school, bunks off for a place of safety to get some sort of comfort away from it. Goes before a tribunal, a school tribunal about to disclose what this Favin filth is doing to him. Yeah. He was that close to exposing it. They deliberately shut him down and then sends him back to the school where he's subjected to not just the same offence, but it's intensified. And can we just take it yeah, from there, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, got, I've gone back to school, John, and, you know, the, the, straight away I've had to go, because I've gone to Avon House North, I've had to go back into, like, the special unit aka rescue unit and i just thought oh no i know what's coming and i could see the grin the day i went in on his face and luckily at the time i was in there there was like about four other kids then right but i knew in my heart that in a matter of days that class would be getting fizzled out yeah yeah and it come you know about the third day in that did that did happen that class did get fizzled out but this time he took me to an annex to do drawing. We had two parts of the school, upper and lower. So he took me back over to the lower school into an annex to so say do like like drawing in like a life study of a statue. And um, there was a cupboard in the the, the the class. And when he got me in the classroom in the cupboard, that was it. That was just you know I just I had enough, mate. I just right. couldn't take it. You know I mean I I had enough, John. You know, it's just... So wh- where did it go from now? I didn't go back to school. I kept, I kept bunking off at of school. I wouldn't go back. Then, of course, I'm getting, mum and dad are getting letters from the school of me not going. They're not really asking, but dad's getting angry. Right. Because, you know, every time I say, I, I try to talk to my dad or my mum about what is happening, they're not going to listen. Yeah, yeah, dad's yeah. Dad's always drunk. Yeah. Mum's always petrified. she got two other kids to look after. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it was so, so hard, mate. Like, life at home was really, really the hard. The thing, thing is, Darren, a lot of this would have been on your school record anyway. Yeah. So they would have known. They would have known you. You would have fit the profile of the victim. And, and there would have been... You wouldn't have been the only victim of this man. No, no, way, no, no choice no, about he, it. He's, he's in prison now, so... Yeah, well, may he rot in hell. And um, so, again, the school board got involved. I got took a court then. Me and mum and the old neighbour went to court. And because um, I wouldn't go to school, every time I tried telling someone of what was happening as to why I wouldn't go to school, why I couldn't, because I was scared. But no one wanted to hear my story. 
it was the 1980s it was really early in the year you know and they weren't interested yeah yeah like, and no matter what you if you tried talking to anybody you just got shut down instantly so you've gone back before this panel have you no i got to the court this time you, got, you actually went to court yeah i got to, to, to the to um, juvenile to court a, it was the uh, old bristol juvenile court right and it was tuesday the 2nd of june 1982 right. we got there in the morning our case wouldn't put up until the afternoon and it was weird because that was the only time ever that was the first time ever that my mum bought me new clothes that day right, for yeah to for going to court that's a reward for you isn't it well not really no. what happened afterwards no. <laughs> but you know and she, she bought these new clothes and it was horrible because we had to go into like a waiting room kids were going in and not coming out yeah and it was very cold, like very cold, even though it was summer, but it had like green walls, I couldn't forget it, with brown benches. And we get called up and you go in and there was like a long bench. There was three people at the bench, a couple of people each side, six chairs. Um, mum's friend couldn't come in and it was me and mum. And I had to stand in front of mum. And I actually tried, it. they asked me of what was going on and I, I actually tried telling the judge at the time, because it was a district judge, not, you know, some like high court right, judge, yeah. it was like a district judge. The, you know, I went happy at school because I didn't like what was happening at school. <clears throat> and with that, they just kind of stop you there and then in your trucks. You know, they go on about your school record and, oh, you should be... And, um... Right, if we just... Someone rang and there was a <laughs> throw. Darren's gone before the court and they found against him. Okay, and he gets an approved school order. Uh, please, please, no one ring while this is going. You know, please don't let anyone ring. Um, and they've now, he was about to speak out for the second time. He is then shut down. They then issue an approved school order and find against him as, as the more, the, you know, as a wrongdoer, not as a victim. And he is now then, uh, his mum's given him a hug, but then now they're taking him away. And what happened? And then me and mum, went to the oh. door up to the right so we'd gone to that door and we had to, I had to sit in the little room mum come in literally it's the only time she ever showed and it felt beautiful for once she told me she loved me she told me to be brave and she told me she would see me again and mum left and um, I cried for my mum I just wanted my mum back because I was on my own I didn't know what was going on I didn't understand what had happened in the courtroom I couldn't register anything I didn't know where I was going I actually thought I was being told off and I was going to be let in. Go home again, yeah. And then I could hear mum crying as she was being let out. And um, we had to wait there for like half an hour. Then a couple of chaps come in with suits. Never forget them. They look like, I don't know, something from like an old 70s gangster thing, the way they were dressed. With the, and it was me, a chap called Anthony, and a chap called Joe. I can't go into their surname no, because no, I've no, not, no, no, I've not okay. got consent. That's okay. And um, we got led from the juvenile court with little kitty handcuffs cuffed together. All right. Across to the car park. We were put into a van. The door was shut and we were gone. And it was a nice, like, beautiful summer's day and my head was still spinning. I, I didn't know what was happening. Didn't know where you was I, going, I what was going on. I literally didn't realise where we were going to. Because yeah. nothing was said of what, you know, what we were going to be. Was, was it in a proof school? Was it in a romance centre? And we end up in um, Bath. Um, place called Coondang was the area and it was 181 or Froome Road it was um, an approved school for boys and girls right. and it was in it was called Freeways and um, you go in there and it was I don't know it was very like when I went in that day with the two other lads it was really really quiet because like you didn't really see anybody you had you had to go through in front of the staff they had to talk to you you know find out what was going on while you were there you know what you did like what you didn't like then you got shown around the place and you got taken to your dormitories given your bed in told that you got you know this is what you got to do every day you got to have your bed packed done by seven o'clock in the morning right. you got to be stood you know your bed's got to be done before you go to breakfast you know you got to have your certain colors you know on and that was it for a little bit then in the afternoon we get called down one by one and it was the very, very first day that staff picked your brain. They um, kind of said, you know, they sit you down and they say, you do like our mum and dad? And I'd say, well, you know, I really love my mum. And they'd go, well, why do you really love your mum? I said, because I really love my mum, because my dad's horrible to my mum. 
and he beats my mum and I don't like it because you know I don't want to see my mum hurt and I don't want to see my mum cry and he go well so you don't like dad and I say no I said because you know dad, what dad does to mum so you know you love mum but you don't love dad I said yeah you know I really love my mum and I don't love my dad and I want to be with my mum so I want to protect my mum yeah. but I can't and um they kind of like straight away they've got inside your head there and then because they yeah. find out who you're well, doing. Well, they profiled you, that's what they've done. You know, and we got shown again, like, where the school was going to be and what you had to do and what was expected of you. And we got, you know, told to go for, like, food. And after your food, it was about 7, 8 o'clock, you had to go up to bed. But the ritual on the first night, and anybody can back me up with this, is um, you had to get the what they call the first night beats. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you yeah. had to yeah, it, lay yeah. on your bed with yeah. your, like, just your underpants on and they had to put stuff in pillowcases and back all, up. yeah we'll come in but that's organized by the staff yeah right so like the staff are kind of like so you you know well, they enjoyed it didn't they yeah they kind of they, they, it wouldn't you know you went, it, it didn't go for long it lasted about five minutes yeah you had the first like but all three of us had it and to be honest it did hurt because we had like boots in the yeah, pillowcases yeah. and um but what didn't help that day when I was doing my bed pack, I was only a little kid, the chap, well, the kid in the next bed to me, Donald, messed my bed pack up, and I <laughs> had a little fight with him. Oh, right, okay. And I, I didn't realise that, because I blacked his eye, that he was getting, well, basically, well, someone was going to come and see him, but he couldn't because of what I'd done. Right, right. So I got, that night, I got punished for that, because of, you know, fighting with Donald. So, so the inference here is that, that, that Donald was actually going to be rented out to someone yeah, that night. I didn't want to say that, but yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So, can we just describe the dorm? How many kids were in there? Um, ten. So you had five, like you had five beds. Yeah. Okay. So you'd have like one, two, three, four, then one there, five. Then you'd have a big partition with five down. Right. Okay. Then you'd have like a toilet at the end, uh, a bathroom. Then you had the other baths in the showers, which were downstairs is where you had to go and we had like a couple of blocks of them and you had the other dormitories at the other end and, and what age group were in there um from 10 until 10 year old my word. i think about 16 something. Oh, yeah God. 16 but it was harder for the girls because they was always like trying to sell for them all the time so there was there, it was a yeah, mixed yeah, unit yeah, yeah but we didn't you couldn't really have a lot to do with the girls like you right. could you could see them in class but it was at the other end but he always looked like very, very like heavily depressed. They had, especially one of them, I used to feel sorry for, I used to give her my sweets. And um, she had like cut marks and she was always trying to put stuff into her oh. things, like drawing pins. Oh. And um, she was a lovely person. Like she was really, really nice like to talk to as well. She was a good friend, but you just couldn't like help her really. How many kids were in this unit? 40. 40 kids. Yeah. So mixed kids from yep. the ages of 10 to 16. I mean, what a young age, 10 to 16. Of course, you've got all those hormonal differences between God, the 10-year-old yeah. and the 16-year-old yeah. <laughs> yeah. and everything else. So the violence started straight away and then you wasn't aware, but there was th th this renting out system going on as well. Well, for me, like I said, after you've had your initiation with the lads at night, you've had your first night yeah. beats, um, then it was about half past ten because you always had an head boy and our head boy he was oh, he was just evil you know and I ain't got I don't care about saying his name yeah, yeah. I'll say it and he's still alive yeah, his name was John Beecham and he's he was just pure in utter he was 16 um, he was tall slimy he had like a disfigured face oh, right. you know he didn't look right John yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean he, he didn't look right mate and he was the one that would he, he was the one on my very very first well, the class night. was a daddy don't they yeah but he was the one that took me to the telly ring that right. night for fighting with donald yeah. and for making donald's eye black yeah i had to go down to the telly ring and it was a bit for me it was the very first night that everything started down in the telly ring i go down and the, the first chap I, I met the gentleman the old guy yeah afterwards when i left it turned out to be my probation officer right to silence right no. so he was he I was like a, he was like an in-house worker residential worker but he was also a probation officer no he was um what he was he was a 
he was a probation officer yeah. who would come in and interview kids. Right. But in the daytime, he was um, a magistrate. Right. And and what role did he have in he what did, went on in there? He'd come in and talk to you about, like, you know, how you feel mentally and right. where you're going and how things have been. He was just basically trying to, like, dig into your brain yeah. of, like, you know, what you're up to and, uh, it, it, you know... He was another one. He'd ask you a lot about own life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he'd really. Push well, they you need about... to pick their victims, don't they? They need to pick their victims. Well, yeah. Wisely. And that was the first time I ever met Eric Pierce, and um, it was. And I got e I Eric got Pierce being my probation officer when I left. Right. Okay. Right. And I, I met him in the TV room. It was him. Okay. It was Clive who to drive the minibus, and oh, John who was literally like the top bloke in the, in, in, in the approved school. Right. John Turner. Right. That's his name, John Turner. And I was told to stand by Mr. Pierce. Horrible, like he had like a suit, like a horrible, it was a toy, because it looked like, like a cat's eye. Right. And I was looking at it and, you know, well, I've just got to abuse, mate. By all three? No, just by, Mr. Pierce. Mr. Pierce. Right. He made me the first thing I had to do. He made me touch him. So he, I had to, he had to lay back and he made me touch him. But I had Clive and John Turner, like well, they present when they. Daddy was sat next to him, and you know, the, the, uh, words fail me. But I, I, I'll, I'll say my bit at the end. But please, yeah, yeah, please yeah. go ahead. Please go ahead. And. Um, I had to touch him, he touched me, and it really, really hurt. And, you know, I don't want to be rude to people on here and stuff, and, you know, but... It, people a, need to know what went on. For a on, couple of days, though. you know, me forced him was really bad, because oh. he really pulled it back with such force, and, oh, God, the pain was unbearable. You know, and it was... So this is the first night? That was my very first the night. The first that was my night. very first in cancer. And, and, the, and what I say to people, you know, we're talking a 12-year-old boy. Anyone who's, who, you know, we've all been 12, but anyone who's got young kids, can you imagine? Please, please put yourself in Darren's position and imagine, you know, the fear as well as the physical pain and the humiliation. You know, yeah. my God. So, right, and then how did things go? Then I got led back to the dorm by John Beecham in bed. It started, you know, you're crying. One yeah, I was scared. Course. I was in pain and I really, really, really wanted to be with my mum. I, 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 I didn't know my mum was safe, yeah, or she was yeah. going to get beat up. You know, I really... I, and she probably thought you were safe as well. Yeah. And the next day I did get left alone. It was Joe, the kitty, on the other side of the bed. And that's when the, the first time I actually heard screaming and I, it was horrible. It was so, so horrible. But no one in the people were like too scared to move John like right, you're yeah, in your you're bed and, yeah you don't know what to do do you you know what I mean you just it was it was horrible mate it was horrible and, and this what time of night would you say this was from about nine until well whenever it finished whenever they finished there was no they didn't work eight to five didn't yeah, they? Yeah. they didn't have a set timetable so we can know. only imagine what they, what they were doing to Joe and, and we've got Darren hearing the screaming everyone was frozen well, no, it just got me. It was all the other boys. Oh, of course, of course. All the other boys went through. Now, you deprive not just of that horrific abuse. You deprive people of sleep as well. Mm. That's going to take its toll on you as well, isn't it? You know. And then, you know, the next day you go to school and it's like very, a very, very dismal place. No yeah. one's like really paying attention. Yeah. And if you can't keep up with what you're doing, because your mind's elsewhere, mate. Yeah, I know. You've, you've been I know. abused the night prior. You're getting a walloping off the teacher because you're not doing too. You know two boys who actually don't know what it is because you're just so confused you know you're missing mum you're in pain you don't want to be there you don't know what's coming next do you yeah yeah you yeah. know what i mean and it was very very dark and i just literally all i've done it is cry in class that was all i could do i was i was just in pain i was a kid I and was what tortured. was their reaction to you doing that nothing 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 at all no no one cared no one came and give you a hug and said yeah. things would be all right because yeah, yeah. it wasn't gonna be was it you know that wasn't their intention to be nice you know, that's why these places are now shut down. They're gone, they're abolished. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not as if they've done a job, did Th they? This is why it's important that your testimony is out there. And the testimony is everyone, because the world needs to know what went on. 
and not just what what went on those that covered it up and we'll get onto that on the end because yeah, there yeah, is yeah. a lot more for you to to go on about oh, there unfortunately Jesus. i know i yeah. know i'm just gonna go it's just mm. when you, you go to places that i didn't really want to go back to i know it's not yeah. your fault it's, this yeah. is all part of it and i am happy to go there but it's just gonna hurt because i'm of I've course dead deep you know and there's a lot of painful memories for me you know and just hurts that's all mate so yeah so then within a couple of days that's when you really get brought in then to the cycle of what's been going on at night and, right yeah you know then everything always happening it's either the tv room or the stable at the back or down at rainbow woods right. but what you what happened is then you go they come and get well it was always john john would always come and get three or four boys from their beds you can't argue with John because he would just eat either at you and, and and can we say who John was again John Beecham John Beecham yeah he right, lives yeah, in yeah, Bristol yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah. been I thought the police know all about him yeah okay and um so he was there lackey yeah he was yeah. He, he was he was the kind of like go getter sort yeah, of thing right. he'd go off and get you and bring you back and um then you get taken into the TV it was always in the TV room because of the sofas the big chairs and the curtains were always drawn and it was like an horrible feeling when you go in somewhere when you don't like you, you, foreboding they call very, it very mate very foreboding you know it's horrible very like very musky and like you knew that it wasn't good put it this way then you you'd go in the door would shut there always be a there never there never was the main light on never there would always be like a smaller couple of lights sort of thing and there'd be gentlemen just well sat around and we, we, we'd be sitting in the kids would you know day. who these men were I, had I, you seen them before that were no, the workers there was, uh, right. some of them was, was staff but others were outsiders yeah there's people right. that were brought in I've, not, I've never okay. seen them at all we never see them in the daytime we never see them at school yep. we never see them at the hospital visits you know we, we, we didn't see them until the night time right. didn't, I didn't know where they were so they were brought in they for were brought this in sole purpose at night right. and what John would do was lead you to a man and that was it and you had to do what you had to accept of what a man was going to do to you, mate. You know, you'd get a, well, you were getting raped, but it wasn't just him. Then he'd push you to someone else, or they, you know, or if he'd catch you for the night. D did you endure any nasty injuries as a result of this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how would they get treated, or would they get treated? Would oh, God. The biggest, yeah, biggest thing ever. Um, when we, um, when I nearly died from the, um, stuff they give us to take well I didn't die that's a lie um, just felt ill right, okay, right. they give us some sort of like it was, they, give, they give us like a, a relaxer to take to, right. to make your body floppy yeah and, yeah yeah a lot a lot of people mention this Bill Maloney says about this at night they give you like a spoonful of medicine and things yeah, like that and it, it was like a like a syrupy thing and you, you'd have um, a sip of it and well you wouldn't you get forced it down you, you just couldn't say no to, um, it would relax your body so they could do more to you as it you know and pass you around more and I, I come a little bit I didn't realize it at the time but my mind you know I think Largactyl was the name of one of the was things it? I used yeah to use, like yeah. a like a liquid cost sort of thing you yeah. do, your body's paralyzed but your mind's still there and um the, it was I was put to bed after of what happened then the next morning I was ill I wouldn't great I was in pain I was bleeding from my backside um, very, you know, shaky, and they sent me to staff to St Martin's Hospital, which right. was just across the road. So there was a hospital yeah, nearby, yeah, literally about so, two minutes away. So you'd get taken to the hospital with clearly sexual trauma injuries. But what the staff were trying to say was that I took. I, they said they made out I took the overdose. Right. And I didn't. Right. Okay. I, I, there was, you couldn't get nothing. But you would be treated for an overdose. In, yeah, but also injuries. Well, they didn't let you go that far. Oh right. Okay. Uh, okay. You know. Right. There was once when I got attacked in um, the woods by the staff. The, when I was taken to Rainbow Woods, like, and I was taken af afterwards. But again, that was the next day to the hospital. They, um, we were taken across, and we were told to lie to say that we've been fighting with each other with sticks and right. beating each other. Right, right. Let, this is another area which yeah. I think needs to be needs to be said. Um, in its own topic because this yeah, yeah, is yeah, important yeah. and this sort of ties in with a lot of things that are being denied. We're going to give a quick recap here and give Darren a, a, a couple of minutes. Yeah, please, if you would make <laughs> start to get a bit. 
stressy, not stressy, but it's just yeah. hard. The trauma's coming back and you can see, you know, this is what these people do and this is why we do what we do. Now, what, what we've got is, Darren is placed in this unit, 40 kids, mixed with girls and boys, ages of 10 to 16. The first night, he is then experiencing the abuse, which, which forms, yeah, yeah, you go, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, which, um, Amanda. which forms, you know, um, Darren's just gonna go for a quick breather. You're still on thingy, so you're all right, you know. But, um, I, I, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're doing it. But, um, and then the, 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 the raping starts. Uh, not only that, they're using the head boy, the daddy, as it were, as, as the lackey to go and, and collect um, other lads, different lads every night, brought back, and they are suffering horrendous injuries. The screams and the trauma is keeping the lads awake at night, the other pupils awake at night. They're not concentrating. No one's even saying that they're breaking down in class crying, no one cares. But what takes it to a more sinister level is that look, he is now then taken to the TV room or to the stables or to this wooded area, which we're going to go on in a minute, because Darren's had to have a breather on this one. Um, that When he's gone down there, there are men, outside men, that have been brought in deliberately for this reason. And they were brought in and these boys are being passed around within this environment. So this shows that this is, this is being run as a business and this is organised. Um, Darren's back with us now. Now, one thing that Darren mentioned was a place called Rainbow Woods. Darren told me about Rainbow Woods, but this is something I really want people to listen to because this takes it to such a dark, awful level. But can we just just mention what what yeah. is Rainbow Woods? Because there, so, there's one lady already. Nancy knows three ways. She said, "I know where it is." Yeah. So there's people from this environment who sort of know. Oh, so, so Rainbow Woods. Na Nancy would know that Rainbow Woods is in Bath and it's not far from Freeways. It's just down the, down the road, about a mile away. Right. And it was like a big wooded area with loads of dips and stuff. And when we first went down, they'd let you kind of like have a run around. So how many of you would be taken down there? four to six and tops. how would you get there walk there with, a van uh, with clive the driver clive the driver will put you in a van and off you go yeah. right and that was that was kind of like so say well no it's just like a bonding with the like with your friends to right play. okay right Basically, yeah yeah a little he, bit of respite he, a little he, bit he used, to, he used to call it play war clive he used to say we're yeah. going to go and play war tonight right and you so we went down there a couple of times so it was always in the evening yeah, 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 because you know, we had school in the daytime. Right, okay. So we had, then at night, when the day staff went home, then at night we had the night staff come on, which was generally John Turner, who was the owner, and, well, not the owner, but he was in charge. Um, Clive, the van driver. Um, you had two other old ladies who used to make the tea and coffee, but once that was, that was done, they were gone. Right. And you had a couple of other staff that were coming then, but I, I'm not, you know, it, that was 19, that was in the 80s, you know, right. I mean, a lot has happened to me since then as well. So you, then what happened was they were chitted down to Rainbow Woods for a couple of times to get used to the surroundings, to run around right, as okay. kids, you yeah, know, yeah, play well, war, play well, what tug, kids do, it, you, know? you know, and we all thought it was great because yeah. it was away from that place. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And I, I just thought that maybe things, when we got back, would stop yeah. or, you know, but it didn't. So with Rainbow Woods, what happened then was we went down, but it was weird because you would go about nine o'clock at night. And whenever we went down to Rainbow Woods, Clyde was always like really happy in the van, like always swaying the van when he was driving to make us fall and stuff, yeah. laughing. John Turner, he had like ginger hair with these thick, horrible rim glasses. He was a vile bloke. And he'd always be sat in the passenger seat just looking back at you. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. like an old blue transit van. He'd be looking back at you. You'd have to go into the woods, into the centre of the woods. Then what you'd have to do then, you'd have to take, off, you'd take your clothes off to your underpants. And they would give you between 10 to 15 seconds to scarper. Right. You had to run, right. you know, and hide. And what they used to call it was touch, but I knew it wouldn't touch. Yeah. Because... What we I, I know, know now of what happened when you look back and stuff, and I've spoke to different people about it, like professionals, and was just blown away by it. Was they give you that time to, to run because there were people there they had brought in, and what they would do is when they caught you, you'd get a beating with sticks, right? You know, they'd really lay into you, and then well, you were raped. 
Right. The boys are taken in a van. They're driven to Rainbow Woods. Clive would drive the van and seem to enjoy it. And we've got this guy, John Turner, as well, that seemed to take some gratification, knowing exactly what they were going to endure. These boys are stripped to their underpants. They are then told to scatter, run and hide in their pants at nine o'clock at night. And something Darren said that's important that we need to tune in there here. Other men were brought in. Now, if I may, I'd like you to sort of just sort of allude to who these men were, if there was a type, if there was... There was always kind of like, I mean, being a kid, you didn't really know how to pick people, do you? I'd like to say, you know, but to me, they always felt posh. And posh, right. They always felt kind of well-to-do and... I'd, it's going to sound sad, like sad, but they always like spoke like spelt well. They always yeah, 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 well it. spoken. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Yeah. And um, once you were caught, you were beat, and you were raped. And I had some bad rapes. You know, I was raped some. Oh, I'm sorry about that. There is someone ringing me. They keep ringing me. I don't know who it is. Um, so we've just taken this moment out of it. Uh, Darren just taking the moment uh, to just compose himself. Yes. Um, so we're in Rainbow Woods. The boys are inevitably caught by these men that have been brought in. Posh men, always well spoken. Always. They are whipped with sticks and then they are horrifically and brutally raped by this group of men. Right, so. And, you know, you'd kind of like, down there it was horrible because you didn't know where they were, what they were really going to, you know, what they were going to do to you. You know, when you're running as a kid, and to me, I always just wanted to get away. I didn't want to, you know, but you didn't. Did they run after you? They would No, they'd run into you sort of thing, because right. you were took into the middle of Rainbow Woods. Right. And even though, like, Clive or John Beecham or John Turner would say, right, you got 10 seconds, it was never 10 seconds. Right. The minute you got as far yeah, they as... They were off, you're on you. They were on they, you, yeah. you, you couldn't go, You couldn't have yeah. got away. There was too many of them for you. Yeah. You know, you, you couldn't do it, mate. It, it wasn't possible, you know. And um, then... You know, you get raped in the woods, then you get taken back to freeways, and it was horrible because, like, you were cold, you were dirty, yeah. you were, oh, yeah. you know, oh, no. just abused, mate. It was horrible. And how, I was, I was a how kid. often would this go on for? I went to Rainbow Woods of about, I'd say, like six, six to eight times in right. my in my time. How there. long was your period in that home? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four and a half years. They're yeah, doing mate. nothing more than not going than, to school. Not going to no, I didn't pinch nothing. I didn't, you know, this I goes didn't. to show how organised this is. And not only that, the magistrate was visiting this home as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and the probation officer. Oh, you know, because that's what happened back then. When you had when you had an approved school order, it, it was until you were sixteen. Until you were sixteen. That was it. That was the aces, mate. That was the that was a bad time for it all, John. Uh, out out of all of you 10 that were in that dorm how many do you know that are still about now two two that's are it. alive now two that's that's you know, it would have been your age maybe a year above or a year uh, below a couple um they would have been a bit older but you know after all the abuse like i said there's so much i can go into and you haven't got enough time you know you haven't got, you know that this that one just the, the tv room uh, Rainbow Woods or the stable or the bloke uh, I, who owned the place but had the land at the back that used to come in and it's not until you get older that you see things and you think oh my god you know and, and we were talking earlier and there were yeah. some significant other events that went on and there was a name that you mentioned and it's something that I've mentioned this name before yeah and, and I know I always go on about this bloke called Bishop Peter Ball. Oh my, see, but we, 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 to us, he was Uncle Pete, and that was it. We knew him as Uncle Pete. That's what we called him, Uncle Pete, because that's what we were taught to call him, as Uncle Pete. He was... What was his role in all this? He would be in, he was always in the TV, he was never in Rainbow Woods. He was right. always in the TV room. He would attend the TV Yeah, room. yeah, yeah, he was always in the TV room, mate. Uncle Pete, that's what everybody called him, Uncle Pete, because you were taught to call him Uncle Pete. Yep. And I, I, I didn't know who he was. Yeah. You know, I, 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 had no clue. I didn't know any of them were. You know, until you get a bit older and you see things and you think, Jesus. Was it only later that you'd seen him somewhere and then realised it oh, was a certain thing? Um, can I say it? A friend. And... I mean, the, the, what, we've, what we've got here oh. is that there is a name 
that yeah. we've got to withhold for, for Darren's safety and basically the safety of all of us. Hopefully, we're going to get some legal advice on this. Um, but this is someone that has a connection with, 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 with Bishop Peter Ball, that vile person. But for the time being, the, the prudent thing to do is, is to just keep back until we get some legal advice, which I'm going to do for Darren um, to make this safe. But just got to protect something, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you're needed um, to be here to fight another because, Dar Darren, we are getting nearly 400 live views, which is unprecedented. Every single message that comes out is a message of love Thank and you. compassion and of support. Thank you, you are now part of a huge community of people that want this to stop and they want it to stop now and they want those that are alive that were responsible held to justice. It is unprecedented what we are seeing. You know, I think needless to say what Darren has gone through is nothing more than organised, evil, systemic abuse which was probably so well established and they were so confident yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that they could get they, on with this. The, the thing is, DJ, as well, they're, they're confident because they've got on your mind, do not they? Yep. You know, they've actually got in. They know yep. that. And the other bit, bullies. and the, the other bit of all this was, um, people always said to me, yeah, not because I, it's not, from what I see, people always said to me, I don't, you know, what ain't going on? You know, I was raped. I was raped. I, I've opened up to <clears> like one or two people, and one person actually said to me, why, "Why couldn't you tell someone?" Yeah, yeah. I said because they're very, very clever. And they said, well, "What do you mean they're clever?" I said because what they do is on that first day when they've asked you who do you love mum or dad yep. and i've said mum so when my mum and dad came and visited me now and again before you had to visit with your parents staff always pulls you to one side yep. and said if you talk and say anything when your parents leave there we're going to kill your dad and what i didn't want my dad to die yeah because i didn't want you know my mum to be on her own she had my brothers and I didn't want them to hurt my dad. Yeah, yeah. That's all there was to it, mate. I didn't want them to hurt. I, I protected the man who I hated. I protected the person who I really hate. But that's because you've got compassion, my friend. And that's because you're different to them, you know? But, I mean, all of this, it's got to take its toll on you. Well, of course it And um, 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 What happened in later life to well, you? you I mean, the, in later life, you've kind of like, you've come out of care, you've come out of wild child, as you start to grow up out of the system, you, you've turned to crime, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, you've yeah. Literally, you, your brain's gone, it's mashed. Yeah. Your brain is gone. You know, and who's going to employ someone that can't read or write? Yeah. Who's going to, would you? And, and this you is know? something you said to me, the, the reason you couldn't read and write, cause not because you went to school, because you I, couldn't I, I concentrate. Couldn't, you can, how can you concentrate? Yeah, but yeah. Your, back, you, your back passage is yeah. bleeding, your back passage is sore, you've been beat, you've been bullied. You've been intimidated. You've been abused. How can you really sit yeah. down? I couldn't even write my name properly. And and look at the people that are involved. We are now got someone who is a pers uh, 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 the best personal friend of a member of our ruling family, is is one of the abusers. He's well known paedophile uh, um, Bishop Peter Ball and was protected by the establishment. And we and, are seeing this all the time. And what didn't help either was. The bloke that owned the place, like owned the land. Yeah. Can I mention him? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You go. He's dead. Yes. With Lord Bath. Lord Bath. And and, and that was one of my abusers. And let's go on about Lord Bath, because Lord Bath And I didn't know you'd been involved with this stuff. Yeah, and he has, because Lord Bath is on the reigns list. He's on the list that we constantly keep going on about, a list of people involved in satanic ritual abuse. How dare these people even, they're on television, yeah. they're sitting there as these pillars and a bit quirky because he's, he's a bit odd, he's a bit, and, and nothing more than a child rapist. You know, I, well, I hope they're rotting in hell for what they've done. But, you know, go on down. And it's, it's like when you say, you know, with like Lord Bath and, you know, Uncle Pete and stuff, it's like, you know, that's what you had to call him as. Then when you get older and you see other faces and you yeah. see someone who's so high ranking, high and, ranking, and yeah, you yeah. think, oh my, and you're looking at the events of what happened around yeah, 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 these yeah. people. Obviously, I can't say their name yet, which I'd love to. Yeah, but you know, and you got to stand back. Yeah, you got to watch these people. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. ruin other people's yeah, lives. Yeah, well, we, we saw it with all the victims of Jimmy Savile. Yeah, you know, I mean, there was people that used to when Savile come in would would in the pubs start throwing things at TV screens. 
you know, because out of pure frustration and hatred and anger, and of course, then the system protects them. Yeah. You know, and the injustice, and the, you know, and and it does though. It's it's like when you, you know you, you, you for us, like for I find it hard for me. I, I, I'm still not great at reading and writing, and I'm, and I'm glad I'm not right. because I don't want to be like one of these that gets you know have to get a paper every day and study it because every time I open that paper, I always see one particular face. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I and mean, people are asking. Um, and it, it, well, I've not got the glasses on, not, so not I can't see. <laughs> Survivors, but they're asking how did how comes you've come so far that you're here now that you've not succumbed to suicide, you've not succumbed to drink, drugs, or whatever. It's because I'd say there's so much in my life I want to keep to me personally. Yeah. Because you know, there's a lot of stuff, not bad stuff, but like with the abuse and you know, <coughs> how do I come? So what, when I left Carrie at 16, I come out of Wild Child, I went back to my mum and dad's house for a bit, I was always getting kicked out, Mate said I can stay for a night, kicked out, so I, I turned to crime, and I turned, I, I turned to smoke, my first bit was smoking back then, it was ashish, yep. okay, so yep. just, just to like, to con me, to try and numb the brain, you know, then I, I, I got involved in petty crime, it started yeah. off like small with shoplifting, I became a dab hand at that. <coughs> Then I learned to drive, and of course, you know, no car was safe. Not that I'm proud of it, John. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. It's, and I'm not, no, and I'm no. not, and I'm not going to glamorise crime because I no. think it's a bad, bad thing, you know. But um, I had a lot of, you know, drugs inside of me, and I just got heavier and heavier in, involved with crime. And when you're involved with crime, what happens is it kind of like puts you into a different place altogether. Yeah. You know, you should know you're an expert. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. You know? I know. And um, it, it does. It puts you into a different perspective your, your way of thinking and well you're in a different your... community as well now yeah you know, yeah and I, you're I, moving far and well, far away from I, normal I, society what it was the area i was living in in bristol <coughs> it was kind of like it was a good place to grow up and it still is you know i don't live in that part now i, I live in another part but i used to look at people and look at my mum's family because my mum's family are roman gypsy yeah 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 and there's there's a lot of supporters from the roman and gypsy community follow me and it's you know I was a kid and I was always thinking to myself, because I was tormented inside, I was battered, I was abused, I was angry, I was just torn, I was ripped to bits. Yeah. The, I used to look at people and think, oh, I want to be bigger than you. Yeah. You know, I want to be bigger than you. I've got more to prove because I've got more pain to get out. And um, then, you know, from the cars, from the commercial burglaries, when I say commercial, I mean shops, warehouses. Um, I actually find a bit of a Oh, it's going to sound silly, I suppose, but again, I'm not going to glamorise it. I, I became a good I, it, um, fraud. Right, very, fraud. Yeah, well, deception. I was going to say, it's obvious you've got a high IQ. You know, whether you can read or write or not. I was very, kind of, very, yeah. very, very good. I was right. I was good at what I'd done. Um, and a lot of people in our levels liked at the way I worked, yeah. with the confidence, you know, the way you carried yourself, the way you went in with no fear. Yeah. And um, it then, you know, it kind of like, you're meeting other people and they're showing you like bits and pieces and they're showing you like, have you ever seen a shotgun? It's like, no, 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 I have, yeah, but do you want to hold it? I said, I'll hold it. And the minute I held it, I put it up and I actually felt great <laughs> that I've arrived. Yeah. And that the person that gave me that gun, yeah. had basically said to me afterwards, well, you can have it. Right. And I felt like John Wayne. I felt you'd been promoted. Yeah. And, and, but in a way, you had, because yeah, you yeah, proved yeah. your ranking yeah, yeah. through of what yeah. you've come through. But in amongst that, you know, the, the fraud and stuff, I've been in and out of prison a few times, done a couple of prison sentences. Then all my, with the drugs I was taking, it was just blocking out all my past. Of what I had to, I just put myself full of drugs. I, I had no choice. I had to, I couldn't do it normal. How could you survive? And yeah, what's yeah, going on course, in, in your head? You know what I mean? Then it was, I got caught for a lot of, you know, crimes. It'd be get, well, at the end of 1991, I got put on remand and I went to trial in the April of 1992 at Bristol Crown Court, the old Crown Court. And what is, they had a weird setup. I, I got tr um, found guilty on the trial and uh, for some uh, weird reason, my case then was put on over two weeks for the judge because he had an illness. Right, he wanted he wanted continuity. Yeah, he, to he sentence. He, in, um, he was right. ill and didn't come back. Right. So Friday the first of May, 
1992 with two co-defendants again I can't say their names because I haven't asked you know yeah, yeah. No, that's right. believe it's it or not they're both dead but I've not right. asked their you know, okay. families yeah, no, for it so um, we go to Crown Court and we're in, up for sentencing I was up for um, would you like to say the amounts? yeah yeah, yeah. of course um, back then it was nearly just over a quarter of a million in fraud right um, that was from like credit not, not credit cards but check books right kiting and things yeah kiting you yeah. got it mate yeah and um, the, uh, commercial burglaries, a lot of twock, and you know I got caught with a couple of um, like empty firearms. So they were going to chuck it at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And I, I was expecting, I wasn't ex- expecting what I got at it that day. So I've gone. We've all gone to Crown Court, the three of us. My two codies had form anyway, but they was up for two armed robberies as well. Right. But I was, I got clear of those because I, I didn't do them. And um, the sentencing judge, as he come out in the afternoon, he sat down on the bench, he looks at me like that, you know, yeah. he, well, he looks at me, yeah. I looks at him, yeah. he's then put his head down, I looked at him again, and I thought, oh, you my good God, he raped me as a kid. Oh! He raped me as a kid. He raped me as a kid. That's what he done. And in all that time, when he was summoning up the sentencing, yeah. he couldn't look me couldn't in the eye. Your, and he could. kept putting his head down. Shame I'll on him. Never forget. And I was looking at him. him. One shot, he shot, yeah, and yeah, there was yeah. the judge there who would rape me. I spotted oh, him. How dare they? You didn't forget that piece. Yeah, did yeah, you? yeah, yeah. How dare they? My first Cody uh, got 21 years. My second Cody got 16 years. And when the judge started doing my sentence, yeah. and he couldn't look at me, when he, yeah, when he was yeah, tallying yeah. up, yeah. he was doing two years four years five years yeah, 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 yeah. when he got to 29 years yeah. i switched off 29 years then all of a sudden i heard 31 years oh, 31 and i years. can hear people on the back going no oh. one died no no one died no, no, one, no one was shot yeah but you know and, but he couldn't look at us the and you're being sentenced by a paedophile who, and who raped you and he should be getting life for doing that i could never forget like the gasps like people going like oh my god, and god. I, I, was tw- I was just turned 21 and I was shocked. You, you couldn't know, make it up, could you? I was a kid. I was a kid, mate. You know, I was a kid. And Unbelievable. I don't know if the judge is still in active service at the moment. But the weird thing was as well, Incredible. when he was weighing us off, he couldn't yeah. look at the three yeah, of us. Yeah, yeah. So me two codies, they're in shock yeah. getting their sentence. Because yeah. we weren't promised that. Yeah. I was told I'd get six, eight, yeah. six, nine. Yeah, not double No figures. one told me. Me barrister, his name was Dorian Day from London. He, he couldn't believe it. So you have got life. He come downstairs and he just said, like, I was shot. That, that, that had to be subject to an appeal. We did. We, they have our appeal resentencing. It took... Did any of that was ever mentioned about your pre, your past? With that it? was wiped off, mate. Yeah, yeah we were told to silence. Stra- oh. I, I was told to silence straight yeah. away. Yeah. That was one of the deals why they, I shut my mouth. Right. Um, I got took back to court on Friday the 15th of May. I got resentenced to six years, eight months. Six years, eight but months. And he was gonna say, the bloke who raped him as a kid gave him 31, 31 years. years. That's what, that, that was the sentence I got, John. Unbelievable. So I've got six, eight. Me first um, Cody, he had a bit knocked off and so did me other Cody. So we, like, we were like yeah, happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But bear in mind, they got a bit more than me on that one because yep. they had two armed robbers. And, you know, I've come out of prison then um, with a bigger grudge because you've been in some decent jails, you've met some big boys. Yeah. They've kind of primed your brain of what to do, yeah, yeah, where yeah, to go, yeah. who to go and visit, what you got to ask for, and it just went for now. Then you know, you, welcome to the world of organised crime. Yeah. You know, where how did that break? How come? How did you go from that to where you are now? You know, away from that life, and and well, and sort of basically speaking out basically, in, in such a brave way that you are. Where it. I just, I, I had enough of it all. Yeah. I had enough of people getting hurt, you know, putting fear into people like people put fear into me. It's not right, it's not normal, no, is it? No, no, it's not People normal. shouldn't it's have them be doing that, you no, know what I mean? No, It's it, It's not like the cool uh, thing, is it? You I'm, don't do that. I mean, I, I will never do an interview with someone and talk about crime. No way, unless, it's disgusting, un, Unless people are putting it right, helping others, or the root causes come from exactly where you've you come know, from, how... But I had to try and find me in amongst all that as well. Yeah, the yeah, lost yeah. lad, yeah, the lad that had yeah. been raped by the frightened lad, the frightened lad, yeah. the lad that had been raped. You know that had been raped by judges, probation, um, someone very high up. Um, a, you know, 
Pete. Uh, Lord Uncle Bath. Pete. Yeah, Lord Uncle Bath, Pete. A judge. You know, an Uncle Pete's friend, but for the time being, I can't really say a lot, can we? No, no, no. I mean, they're, they're, it does go a bit bigger. Oh, God. Look, this, this has been hard going for Darren. You can see it's been hard going. I think the, the, the prudent thing to do here, because there's obviously a lot more that's got to come out, but for today, I think, you know... Yeah, because I've not even scratched the surface, no, you know, no, I, I, no. I haven't. It's not, you know, in, in leading up to this week, I've lost nine pound in weight, John. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've not slept, so I've yeah. not eaten. You know, earlier I, I couldn't eat what we, we were given. It's because I, I just can't. It's, no, it's killing me inside yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. I'm in so much pain inside. Because, you know, I, I've lived with this for 38 years. It's not like you can just switch off, is it? No, I've seen no. some of the, I've seen some decent shrinks in the past. And it shocks them. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'd love to go deep. I'd love to sit down on camera and go deep. You know, it's, I'd love to. I'd love to be given the opportunity. But, you know, we've got to be covered legally. Just, you know. You know, but we, we see we see people speaking out and they are getting. We've just seen Cold Beach get 18 years. Exactly. You know. And, That's, you know. And, and then there was another one, Sabine McNeil. She got nine years. Yeah. She's an eight-year-old woman. So we, we, we're seeing what they'll do. And if you look at what's at stake here, and the gatekeepers are these abusers, they will do everything. To, we've got to use our intelligence before we use our heart with this one. Because yeah. we need to have our liberty. We need to be out there. You will be needed, Darren, because people will want to talk to yeah. you. You know, they will. They 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 will want to know how you've got the strength to come here. You will be giving so much solace and support to people in coming this far and speaking out. And like I said, the viewing figures are just absolutely through the roof. Every single one. Thank you, Darren, for speaking no, thank out. You. Love thank you, you Darren. You know, thank you. You know, you can start the hill. The, you know, the support is out there. And you know, all, all I say to Darren is is that I cannot thank you enough and your bravery in coming this far. Brave it really, God. really is. Um, Honestly, it's absolutely shocking, you know, and, and the reason that, that we all do this as, as this community against paedophilia is we want it to stop, Darren. Yeah, well, I, I want it to stop, mate. Yeah. I want it to stop. I, you know, I'd love, like, oh, to put a, a, a dead stop to it, but we can't come here at the moment. Because no. people that, the, the point of me coming out today is I, I want people that, who can see this now, see me, and just open up, come out and talk. I've been scared all week. I've gone through so many emotions because of what I've got up here. It, it, it's the people that have done it. The names that I've got, but I can't really get out yet. Yeah, yeah. We've given in to who it is, but it will come. But um, And this has been very raw as well because this is the first time we've met. You know, yeah. uh, the information is very, very impactful, you know, very hard hitting, you know, and, and it's taken a lot for Darren to do this. And I think everyone out there fully, fully appreciates that. Thank and, you. and and I'd like if if we can that we can uh, you know take it yeah, again yeah, and speak definitely, out. Mate. Yeah, yeah. I know let's, that. Let's get this, you know the legal side done. Yep. And I'm going to put uh, Darren in touch with with the um, ICSA solicitors. Um, I know that Sean Atwood would like to talk. Yeah. Uh, the James English, and and in, in doing that, the word out there because they're trying. Right, it's because we remain and silent, cold. <laughs> and it is getting cold, and we both want to fag. Yeah, but, you know, please support Darren. PM me, you know, with with anything oh. you need to know. Um, there'll be there'll be a way of putting in touch with Darren yeah. and things like that. Um, so come on, show show some support for Darren. Let's all get together. Let's keep fighting this. Let's keep speaking out. Others come forward. We we'll use this as a witness project, so you too can get um. your stories out there and be witnessed. Go ahead. Also, I'd like to say um, that there's a, there's a person out there that gave me a, a, a lot of confidence, and I'm allowed to speak to speak out. Yeah, 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 please. Um, I'm not going to say her name, but it's, yeah. it's a friend, or I, you know, just just a friend, and she kind of gave me a platform to literally spend all night talking. Yeah. As friends, but yeah, yeah, she yeah, let yeah. me open up. Yeah. And you know, I'd like to say thank you for that. You know, you've been brilliant. You've been amazing, and thank you for um, you know, the support. Thank you. You know, I've been scared, nervy. And, and there's a really good guy, Steve, is, and, um, and his missus has been in touch. They like to sit down with you. Yeah. He's a lovely guy, yeah. Yeah. and his story is very similar to you, but listen, my man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Bennett, God mate. bless you. We're going to have a, <laughs> <laughs> gonna have a, a fag now. A bite, yeah, we need right. one.